Hey everybody, Orange Box here again. Um, I wanted to walk through setting up a virtual uh, operating system in a Windows environment. Um, as some of you may know, I typically do a dual boot system uh, with Linux and Windows. But for those of you that don't want to bother with uh, setting up the complicated process of uh, disk imaging and partitioning um, and all that fancy stuff. Um, we're going to set up a virtual PC uh, right within Windows. So the first thing we need to do is download the uh, I use Oracle Virtual Box or Virtual Machine, whatever it's called, and I'm sure that there's others out there, but the um, easiest way to get there is just do a search for Oracle Virtual Box and we'll go there and this is the screen that pops up we'll go to the downloads section and we are going to download the VirtualBox 4.3 for Windows hosts so we're going to go ahead and save this file and I will install the VirtualBox and we'll be right back to uh, talk about the next thing okay so we've installed the uh, virtual box and one thing that I wanted to show you uh, when virtual box installs let me pull this window over so under your network and sharing center if you go to change adapter settings you'll see that the virtual box installs um, another network connection now this is I guess for lack of better words, just a virtual um, connection that when you actually run the virtual operating system, um, it will use this connection here more or less as its network interface card uh, for that operating system. So that being said, let me um, do the next step, which is actually getting the operating system that you would like to uh, use under virtualization. Um, in my case, I'm a big fan of Ubuntu, so that's what I use. And we'll do a search for that. And we'll grab the uh, latest uh, desktop version of Ubuntu off of their site here. So I'm going to just stick with the default 64-bit Ubuntu operating system because I'm using a 64-bit machine. So let me go ahead and download this. This may take a little while, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've downloaded the uh, Ubuntu disk image, and I've opened the Oracle Virtual Box Manager. So to create a new virtual machine, uh, we're going to click New, and the first thing it asks is to give it a name, and we are going to name it um, Ubuntu 14.04 LTS. That's the version we downloaded. And through the magic of programming, uh, when you type in Ubuntu, um, right away it'll recognize the type, so it's a Linux operating system and it's a 64-bit version so we're gonna click next and for memory size I usually use about half of what I have installed on the PC so in this case we're gonna do about four gigs um, since I have roughly eight gigs for available memory and you can see the color chart under here so pretty much when you're in um, the green you should be okay um, so we're gonna just bring this guy up to about four ish something doesn't have to be perfect uh, so there we go for the memory it's gonna roughly be about four gigs now the next thing we do is actually create a hard drive we kinda trick Windows into thinking that even though it's a file on the um, computer um, the virtual box 
we'll use this as a this file as a hard drive uh, for this particular machine. So we're going to go ahead and create a virtual hard drive now since we haven't uh, thus far. And we're just going to leave it at the default virtual box disk image. Um, and this is probably one of the most complicated parts of it or confusing parts of it. Um, the dynamically allocated drive means that if you install the Ubuntu operating system in this virtual manager or this virtual machine, um, it will create just enough hard drive space, typically maybe for the operating system and then just a little bit more. Um, I've tried this in the past. I find that it really doesn't work all that well. And in fact, Ubuntu will sometimes report that you're constantly running out of disk space, even though it will eventually dynamically grow in size. Um, but I tend to use the fixed size now. So that's what at least I'm going to do in this video. Now, by default, um, it shows eight gigs. Um, but we are going to create um, one that is about 40 gigs. Um, for some of the programming that I do in Linux, you know, the file sizes aren't huge. Um, so that's, I don't know, that that's enough for me anyway. Um, so we'll say 40 gigs. So let's go ahead and create that. And this may take a few minutes. So I'll be right back. Okay, so the hard, the virtual hard drive has been created. Um, it took about roughly 10 minutes or so for the, uh, the 40 gig hard drive. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is uh, actually set it up so that when we boot this virtual machine for the first time, it's going to use that installation image that we downloaded from the uh, Ubuntu website. So let's get into that. Now, under the storage tab over here on the left, um, for the IDE, which says empty, we're going to select that and then click this little disk over here. And we're going to choose a virtual CD or DVD disk file. Okay, so as you can see here under the location, which is kind of clipped off a little bit, I've selected my uh, Ubuntu ISO image that we downloaded. And then um, we're going to click OK. So now for the boot, it's going to use this uh, ISO image that we have here. OK, now to start the machine, you can either double click this box here, the blue box, highlighted blue box, or you can click Start. So now what's going to happen is this is actually going to install Ubuntu onto that virtual hard disk that we created earlier. So let me go through this process because uh, it can take a little bit of time and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so we've um, installed Ubuntu and um, when you get to the end of the installation, Ubuntu actually wants you to restart, which is fine, uh, but the virtual machine still thinks that the installation disk is in the virtual CD drive, if you will. So what you have to do is actually then power off uh, the machine in order to come back here. Now for me, it did it automatically, uh, but you'll see that the CD and DVD drive is now empty, which is what we want. Uh, that way it won't, you know, boot from the uh, installation boot disk again. Um, the other thing I wanted to take a look at real quick in the settings under the system you can after you've selected your initial RAM and hard drive space um, you can come in here and adjust some of these settings to your liking afterward now the one thing I always change is the amount of processors so by default it sets it to one processor and if you continue to run your virtual machine on the one processor, it might just be unbelievably slow. 
Um, so I'm going to crank this up to four uh, CPUs, and and that's only because I have 12 to choose from, but that's overkill. Four is plenty. If you have four CPUs as a max, maybe just use half. Maybe use two of them uh, at the most three, because at the end of the day, it's still running under Windows, right? So we, I think that that's all I'm going to do. I don't do any gaming in Ubuntu or anything like that, so probably the default video RAM size is fine. Um, and I think that's it. So we will go ahead and boot back into this, just kind of show you how it's working and everything, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so we've booted back into uh, Ubuntu now. And as you may see, I have the virtual machine uh, application maximized in my window, but you'll see that the Ubuntu desktop here is at some really tiny resolution. You know, you may have tried to do switch to full screen or just window size. Um, all of that stuff does nothing, at least for now. So, you know, even if I, like I said, even if I try to resize it, you can see that uh, the desktop doesn't, you know, increase in any kind of size. So we're going to go ahead and fix that right now. So let's open up the terminal. Okay. And then we are going to do apt, or I'm sorry, sudo apt get install virtual box guest utils and virtual box guest make sure yeah x11 and virtual box guest dkms now when we uh, run this this will install these packages and it should help to uh, fix our screen resolution problem. So let me install these and I'll be right back. Okay, so I let uh, those three packages install and now you can see that the uh, Oracle virtual box here is at full screen and so is our Ubuntu installation. Um, also, if we minimize this box, you'll see that um, or not minimize, restore it to whatever size it was prior, you'll see that the Ubuntu desktop resizes uh, to however you want to do it. So it may flicker and flash a little bit, but it will eventually pick up and go with it. Uh, so now you're more or less using Ubuntu desktop at uh, full screen resolution. You're ready to go. So I think that's it for this video. Uh, please comment, leave a like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, everybody.